What's up and what is good? It's your boy BQ with your Impact Lounge Impact Review. This is for March 30, 2024. If you caught the upload that I did yesterday, maybe 24 hours or so ago, um, I let you guys know that this review would be late this week because, um, I mean, if you've seen any of my other uploads, I was in Indianapolis for uh, three full days for the Squared Circle Expo and, uh, you know, three full days mixed in with traveling and then, you know, having to work or whatever the case, it just wasn't realistic for me to do, uh, to do it any sooner. Um, I do feel the need to address this, uh, cause someone had left a comment that I, you know, I really just need to re do my reviews after the show. So I just want to clarify this again, as I try to do every so often, I do not watch the show as it airs. I frankly won't. I won't watch it as it airs. I don't care to watch it as it airs um, just because I just, I do watch TV at that time, but I, um, if I'm not like working and I'm home with my wife, I just value spending time with her and what she wants to watch during that time. Uh, she doesn't really have interest in impact. I've said that I've said that before. Um, frankly, you know, I always, I always use my wife as a, as an example of a casual fan, because when I watched AEW, she would watch that with me. Impact, she just couldn't because of the production value. You know what I mean? So um, as fans, well, I don't, but a lot of fans have blinders on when it comes to the production value, obviously. But for someone who's going into it, you know, open mind, it's like, well, this looks like shit, you know? So she just never had interest in it. Um, but also, unless they're giving me a reason to tune in live, I just don't. Just plain and simple, you know. If it is a must see episode, I'll do it. I will break a off. I'll break off and and do it. But I don't find the episodes to be must see. I find them to be good more often than not, but they're not must see for me. So that's not going to happen. You're not going to get like a Friday review for me. Uh, the best you'll get is a Saturday, um, and I try to. I try to aim for Sundays and then worst case scenario, a, a Monday. So I try not to do Tuesday like I am now, but that's just name of the game. You know what I'm saying? So I did a little upload about my experience at Squared Circle Ex Expo. There was one thing I forgot to say, which I found interesting. I was talking to Crazy Steve and I asked, does Black Taurus speak English? I've just always been curious about that. And he said he speaks very little, but that they were able to communicate. It was like Steve can't see, this dude can't talk, but they they communicated very well. And he actually said something pretty interesting, and I wish I remember exactly what it was. But he said that Black Taurus actually can't see very well either, which is insane because the dude wears a mask and all that shit. But he said he also has pretty bad vision. So very interesting stuff with the uh, former male members of decay i don't know if i like this camera up so high let's see if we make a quick adjustment here there i can dig that a little bit more all right so i'm going to get into this episode here i'm not going to dwell on it too much because it is tuesday so uh, hopefully i can make this review a little quicker than i normally do and then i've got some um you know content ready for the rest of the week and uh, we'll get some good stuff out here on the channel we have surpassed seven thousand subscribers so I appreciate that very much. And we're going to get into this episode again. I'm going to try not to harp on stuff too much. I say that all the time and then I end up doing the same length of a episode. So um, it kicked off with, well, it didn't kick off with this, but I, I discussed last week that they did explosion. Explosion is now one match and it's old matches and they have given up on it. So you really don't have to watch that if you want to anymore. Don't want to anymore. It kicked off with an 8-4-1 match. Um, I don't mind the the format here. I actually kind of like it. I don't like the name. You know, if, if that's the name they like, cool. I, I just don't think it's very uh, imaginative. If you caught it on Twitter, they spoiled the uh, the match here because the original original graphic had Ash by Elegance in it, and they accidentally posted the one with Steph Delander, and they tagged her. So they deleted the tweet, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's just time to stop tweeting at the Impact Twitter saying, give, give this person a raise. You know what I'm saying? 
because uh, this is pretty consistent over the years, snafus like this. But in this 8-4-1 match, it's uh, Jody Threat, Havoc, Masha Slamovich, and Alicia Edwards on one side. And the other side was Danny Luna, Rosemary, Zaya Brookside, and Steph Delander, who filled in for Ash by Elegance, who had <laughs> – it's like the Warner Brother cartoons when they had a toothache and they wrapped this um, – Oh, the Warner Brother car cartoons back in the day when they had a toothache, they would just take this, you know, cloth and wrap it around their jaw. <laughs> That's exactly what she did. So I got to give them some props because they are they're prolonging Ash by Elegance challenging for the championship. I mean, I thought for sure she was going to wrestle at Rebellion. I think most people did. I have said from the beginning, I expected to win the title when she gets that title shot ultimately. But they are for once not rushing someone into the title picture. So that is a uh, very refreshing and it might be at a necessity because they actually have no one else to wrestle for the title. Like Jordan Grace is just going to run through these chicks like nothing. So you got to prolong Jordan's title reign, especially since, I mean, the Royal Rumble stuff is in the past now, but you also can't just take the title off Jordan right away after that. So, you know, they're doing a good job of prolonging her reign. This match was not very good. This I didn't think this was a good representation of the knockouts division because they're saying, you know, these are the knockouts. This is the best women's wrestling on the planet. You know, they're constantly talking about how they pay the way for women's wrestling. That's not what this was to me. This was like, let's get out of this match as soon as possible. Um, Masha Slamovich got rolled up in the tag team match. I mean, they... They have beat uh, MK Ultra. I know they're not a team anymore or whatever, but they have beat those girls like a drum in the past three or four months. Um, that's multiple roll-up victories, okay? she's. They are trying to make Danny Luna and Jody Threat a thing. Again, out of necessity. These girls didn't really beat anybody before, and they are pushing them, which is great, but they're pushing like the wrong people. I'm looking for a big Zaya Brookside push. I'm looking for a big Tasha Steele's push. I, Lord knows I would love an Alicia Edwards push. They're pushing people I think should be at the bottom of the division, but that's neither here nor there. If that's if that's who they want to roll with, cool. But they're making it all of a sudden that MK Ultra or the respected members cannot beat these girls, which is crazy. But um, Masha gets rolled up just like Killer Kelly did. So, you know, it, does that mean that she should allow her opponents to attack her after the match? I don't know. So um, they're, they're trying to keep keep these women strong, obviously. So the winners were the team of Rosemary, Steph Delander, Danny Luna, and Zaya Brookside. They used Ash by Elegance at ringside to take out Zaya Brookside almost immediately. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but they took out Danny Luna fairly very, fairly quickly. And then Rosemary, out of nowhere, gets hit with radio silence by Matt Cardona. And Steph DeLander wins. So I didn't think this was put together very well. I didn't think it was formatted well. I didn't think it was overly enjoyable. Um, but the episode itself was pretty solid. It just, you know, this didn't, this wasn't a showcase of the knockouts to me. That's not That's not what I got from this at all. Steph Delander is going to challenge Jordan Grace at Rebellion. She has already lost to Jordan Grace. She is one and one in Impact. She pretty much jobbed out to Jordan Grace. It was like a Jordan Grace showcase match. The, the week before, they did a video package and all this stuff. Like, Steph Delander's coming. She comes and jobs in four minutes of Jordan Grace. Now we're supposed to take her as a credible challenger because she did her thing on the indies, got herself over, and now Impact's like her TNA's trying to ride the gravy train. Uh, I think she did win a match on explosion. I'm fairly certain I could be wrong, but I think she, I think they did give her a win before that Jordan grace match. Um, we're going to get that at rebellion. Jordan grace is going to beat her. As I said, the overall episode was okay. It was pretty solid. The production, um, you know, my favorite thing in the world to talk about, right? I actually had some images queued up that I, um, I, I maybe I'll get into them next week. Just examples of what they do to the images. And I did something similar to this maybe two years ago. I pulled up some images and I edited them the way that I would and then the way that TNA does. 
and you know you'll, you'll see a pretty drastic difference so that's why i'm i can speak on this stuff because i know exactly what they're doing like i can show you the settings boom like this is this is what they're doing and this is why it looks like shit. but uh this episode looks horrible what's really interesting is nwa announced that i think in may they're going to the same arena 4300 or whatever the number is don't really care um it's going to be really interesting to compare the two because now we're going to know is it the venue or is impact lazy or does impact have shit um, hardware, shit software? You know what I'm saying? It's going to be really interesting because NWA's production quality this season is superior to, to TNA's. But I want to see side by side in that arena what it looks like. It's going to give us a... For, for all you guys that are that get on here and say that you don't see a difference and that the show looks fine, number one, you should be happy because you're you're the fans that TNA is marketing to, um, the ones who don't care. Uh, but now you now you get to like put your money where your mouth is. We're gonna be able to compare, put the two side by side, and uh, we will see if it's really me making it up or if they really suck at this. So I think I already know that answer, but you soon enough will know as well. So Steph Double D Lander is moving on to Rebellion. As I said, I didn't think it was very good. I didn't think it was a good showcase of the knockouts. Um, let's see. I'm sorry that I'm not super... Um, organized for this i had kind of had to watch this while i was in transit in the airport and all that so you know in a situation like that i can't do i can't take notes or anything like that um it was a backstage segment with time machine alex shelley and chris saban and because she and i wasn't really paying attention so i'm not even going to talk about it he did another backstage segment um chris bay and Ace Austin chatting it up, and Ace Austin was saying Chris Bay shouldn't even have been in that number one contender match for the X Division Championship. I cannot believe they're breaking these two dudes up. Now, they've been, they've had a run, they're multiple time tag team champions. They've been together for a while, but it just seems like every time they form a new tag team, they feel like they have to disband in another. But this tag team division is now falling apart very quickly because you're losing to Motor City Machine Guns, and now these guys are. Are likely gone as well so um my assumption is that if uh you know mason mansoor whatever they call they called right now if they are indeed coming in they're replacing abc because that's what they do they're just like instead of just like building up and again we don't understand we don't know their business model we can just speak outside looking in but every time they they look like okay we're building up a tag team division they get rid of one of the teams in there it's kind of like what they do with the knockouts. It's a two-team division. Once one of them loses or loses the title, let's get rid of them and form another team rather than build a fucking division. So um, I, they're bull, they are bullet club at the end of the day. They shouldn't be breaking up. You know, they should still be together. There's really no reason that they just can't chase. Say, I mean, that's kind of what part of what the story is. Story is Chris Bay saying he can do both. But that is what they should do. They should just still be cool. But, you know, like the Motor City Machine Guns were just on our fucking screen as a tag team and saying, hey, we did everything we could do as a tag team. Let's go chase individual goals. And they were still cool. I understand now there's, you know, the storyline going on that's going to disappear out of nowhere because that's what they do. People are at the end of contracts and they fucking put them in storylines and then they disappear. They've done that for years. Um, I mean, they haven't done it recently, but they have a history of it. There's really no reason you can't just keep these dudes together. That is um, that is crazy to me. I, I Let's break it. Like, you, they don't have to wrestle as a tag team. You know what I mean? They don't have to be in the division, but they can still exist. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, it looks like they're going to break these guys up. It's pretty dumb. Um, Grizzly Young Vets. They're, I'm starting to come around to them. I said that they were doing nothing for me, but now we're getting these promos with Diener. With thank God he's Cody Diener again. Thank God they gave him his first name back. But now that they're on the mic and they're talking, I can kind of dig it. I can kind of dig it. And Cody Diener 
was uh, given the authority by Santino Morella to challenge one of them. Um, he asked the people. The people don't know their fucking names, just like I don't. So um, they chose both of them. And uh, they had a two-on-one match, <laughs> which was, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm weirdly into this Cody Diener thing. They obviously beat him. Uh, but I'm I'm oddly into it because I'm just there's so many directions that this can go where it's really entertaining. So that's why I'm open to it. We'll we'll see if it's interesting or if it becomes one of the worst parts of the show. Who knows? Um, then uh, Gia Miller backstage, lurking in the shadows, um, interviewing Nick Nemeth, who was interrupted by Alex Shelley, who just happened to be standing there as well. And they are going, we're going to get Alex Shelley versus Nick Nemeth soon. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I, I'm, um, I'm not mad about not hearing Tom Hannafin every week going Sable and Shelley. I'm, I'm not mad about that being, that being over with and I'll kick out. Um, so yeah, it's just a random G Miller segment that they feel like they have to do. Um, Eric Bischoff talks about it a lot. These backstage interviews are so so played out, so unnecessary to build angles, you know. Because she's she's not really interviewing them. She's just like, here, I'm here with Nick Nemeth, and then Alex Shelley walks up, and they they have a match. You know what I mean? They make a match. Like, what did Gia do? Joshua Alexander after this comes to the ring. He has no headset um, because now he lost his one and only. He cannot purchase another. I'm I'm really curious if they're just transitioning to him him to not wearing it anymore. It's kind of like in wrestling where they'll do like a hair versus hair match, and someone really is trying to go bald, bald or they don't want to color their hair anymore, or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? They usually do one of those matches to get away with shaving their head. So I kind of wonder if Josh has decided to not wear it anymore. He looks like more of a star without it. Um, I know he wears it for legitimate safety reasons. He looks like more of a star without it, though. Um, but he's in the ring. He calls out uh, Hammerstone, and he gets hot sauce Tracy Williams, who just happens to be standing there waiting, you know, knowing that Josh was going to issue a challenge. He just he just happened to be there. This was a pretty good match. Um, I've seen some of his ROH stuff from the little bit I've seen ROH. I think he did some of the new ROH as well, I'm pretty sure. But I, I know, obviously, the old stuff he did. And it was a pretty good match. I don't expect him to be back. I had said um, last week or the week before, I don't know, that I like what they're doing with Josh. They're not centering him around the world title. But I said no matter what he does, the basis of it is the same every single time. So now we get another best wrestler in the world versus best wrestler in the world and have a wrestling match kind of fucking angles. Um, so for the people who like the work rate stuff, this, you know, this is great. Uh, there's a dog barking. The dogs don't bark unless I need a podcast. It does not fail. They'll be perfectly silent. I really should have let them out before I uh, started recording, but you know, I'll let them out here in a bit. But um, I, I don't remember what upload I said this on. And it's a good explanation of how I am for as a wrestling fan. I don't really care about the matches. I don't care about the work, sh work rate shit. I don't care if it's four star, five star. I really don't fucking care. I, I mean, I, if, it's a, if it's a bad match, yeah, I care. But I care more about who ultimately wins and loses. That's more more my focus when I'm watching a match. All the other shit in between, you know, I obviously don't want to see a shit match, but I don't, if they're just wrestling to have a good match, I don't care. Like I knew Josh was going to win here. So I just didn't have much of a reason to care. I don't expect him to be part of the company going forward. I wouldn't be shocked if, I know it's not announced. I don't believe it is. I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't wrestle Hammerstone next week though. Like it was impromptu. Um, and then Alexander attacks him after the match, just like what happened here. Because afterwards, Hammerstone did come out, who's doing incredible work right now. 
And he tried to put the uh, headset on Hot Sauce Williams. It didn't really stay, but he put him in the torture rack, which is a great move. And um, he's doing excellent work. He's 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 one of the better parts of the show, and they're keeping him off the show too. They're not like forcing him into it, and he's not wrestling every week. So he is he is special right now. So uh, I can dig that very very much. Um. So after that. Mustafa Ali was backstage with Santino. This was as WWE a segment as they have ever done. And it makes sense because everyone involved in the segment was from WWE. But this was a straight up WWE segment where um, Ali was trying to get Jake something taken out of the match um, at Rebellion because he doesn't he doesn't meet the limits. I've always thought the no limits thing was stupid. I know that like the hardcore TNA fan base loves that because Samoa Joe was a champion one time in abyss or whatever. It's a cruiserweight division. It's treated like a cruiserweight division 99% of the time, except when you got to throw Jake something in there. You know what I mean? And there's been some dudes like follow Ba over the years would get up in there, but it's a fucking cruiserweight division. And you only say it's no limits when it's convenient, which is like two or three times a year. It's not, it's not really part of the branding that much, you know. So that's that's my take on that. And they did a segment that is going to lead to lead to Mr. Rhinoceros taking on Mustafa Ali. You know, I can't say that fucking name. Um, taking Ali on next week. Guess what the fuck kind of match it is? Old school rules. So we're gonna see a garbage match next week. But at least Ali is in it, and that's something different. It's not fucking Khan versus PCO. Speaking of Khan versus PCO, though, that's not the next segment here, but we might as well get into it. We did get a backstage segment of PCO yelling Khan's name and Monster's Ball. The gift that nobody asked for, we are receiving. You asked for you know, a PS5, and you got... Um, some socks and underwear. So that's what that's what we're getting here. I don't think anyone wants to see this. Anyone cares? I think that even if Khan wins, he's already lost twice to this dude. One once by DQ, where they're forcing the no DQ match, and then he loses the no DQ match. This isn't even a fucking rubber match. This is a revenge match because PCO had a match with Crazy Steve. And was attacked by Khan afterwards. It's probably leading towards a three-way. I try to get it out of Crazy Steve, who he was fighting at Rebellion. He All he said is that he has a match that I need to watch. So that's probably where it's going. Crazy Steve will probably get involved here. Um, no one wants to see that match, though. I just thought Khan should have beat PCO the first time. And then go from there. You can't heat up Khan as easy as you do some other people. Once you make him lose, he's right back to where he started. Eddie Edwards took on Speedball Mike Bailey. This was very good. This was very good. Um, very good. I can watch just about any Ed Eddie any excuse me any Eddie Edwards match. Eddie Edwards, Steve Macklin, Moose, um, Frankie Kazarian. I can watch any of their matches. Rich Swan. I know he's flippy, but he can sell and he tells a story. So those guys I can watch. If they're if they're the majority of my episode, I'm gonna enjoy the episode. Like I, I enjoy whatever it is that they do. And I know I give Eddie Edwards a hard time because he's fat, but he's still one of the better workers in the in the company. This was a really good match. My only issue was that I didn't really want to see it because. I love when they make us wait on a pay-per-view. Like when they keep having the people touch, like they're probably going to do Eddie Edwards versus Trent Seven next. Versus Seven, kind of kick out. They're probably going to do that next, and, and Trent Seven's going to get the win, and now it's 50-50 booking. We've seen him fucking fight, and now we're going to see him at the pay-per-view. That's probably what's going to happen. I hate that kind of booking. That's WWE shit. I've, I've, I've explained before, I just grew up off like make both guys strong. Like, don't have Mike Bailey lose before the pay-per-view. Don't have Eddie Edwards lose. Don't have any of the four 
people in the match fucking lose. Put them in in positions to win. Now, as much as I don't like knowing who's going to win a match ahead of time, it's different once you've announced that they have a big match for the pay-per-view. The booking at that point should change for that. Instead of giving us previews, I don't want previews. I want you to make me wait. And these were the two the two best workers in the whole fucking feud. I'm cursing a lot today. They're the two best workers in the feud. And we've already seen them wrestle. I like the end because I actually like the Boston Knee Party as much as I talk about dumb finishers in wrestling and dumb uh, or in TNA, I should say, or dumb names for finishers. I like the Boston Knee Party. I just I just think it's a cool name. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't really overuse it. He he he's he wins with other moves. This was um this was entertaining. The the production quality was so fucking bad for this. I, I didn't even talk about it in the beginning when Iceman's microphone wasn't even working. But this this match here, I mean, there was all sorts of shades of different colors and different filters and different settings and hues and fucking amateurs i don't know what i don't know what like we have to beat into these people's skulls to make the show look good i i think ultimately when these nwa tapings come out and i'm you know me i'm going to screenshot the shit out of them and we're going to talk about it on social media and youtube i think that is a great opportunity for us to really bombard uh, impacts Twitter. Anyone that you know, there's a lot of you who foes who fo- foes. That's not even a fucking word. Who follow a lot of behind the scenes people at TNA. Like I don't really know who they are, but I know a lot of you guys do. Once this NWA taping is in the books and it shows up on TV, and if it looks ten times better than this, for those of you who care, which is starting to be more and more of you. That is the time like we band together and attack. You feel me? You tag whoever you need to tag. And you tweet them pictures and you treat, tweet them your opinions. Because that's the only way things are really going to change. This episode, after the last couple looked okay, looked horrible. And as I said, that you cannot watch two episodes in a row that look the same with this company. It hasn't happened once this year. They have looked every single fucking episode has looked different. So it took away from this match how bad it looked. But I really enjoyed it otherwise. If you can just block that out, it's a good match. And then um, we're getting the FBI next week. It's a video package, so maybe Guido is managing a tag team. Who knows? Frankie Gazarian cut a really nice promo backstage. He was um, confronted by Chris Bay, who, who had been looking for him for about an hour and finally found him. And uh, we're going to get that match. So that's going to be excellent. That's going to be a fucking killer match. Those are just two great guys in the, on the, in the ring. You know, Frankie's looking strong. They've kind of got this little story going with the ABC. So it's, it's going to be really interesting. I mean, I thought Ace Austin versus Frankie Gazarian was really good. So this is just going to be another good one. They'll probably both lose to him. And then, you know, we'll see what they do with ABC. Uh, he, Chris Bay did have a line, something like this ain't a water park. You can't just, I can't let that slide. I don't know exactly what he said, but <laughs> I actually thought it was good. It, it was pretty creative. Um, best part of the show for me, Rich Swan and AJ Francis in the ring talking about Rich Swan's heel turn. Rich Swan was amazing here. He completely switched up his delivery, his tone, his cadence, just his overall demeanor. AJ Francis was telling me at, at a, in Indianapolis, Rich Swan has never been a heel in his entire wrestling career. You would have never guessed at how natural he is, and it's not forced. And this is almost like what I envisioned for him when he won the world title. I mean, still do the dance. I mean, he had the best, he has the best theme song in the company, in my opinion, you can still do all that, but you know, he was just like, what's that? My brother, that was a horrible impersonation. And I'm not going to do that again, but you know what I'm saying? His voice was just, he didn't really speak normal. It was just, 
he spoke normal here. Like the, it, it, it sounded fucking excellent. It went a little long, like a little long for my taste, but I was really interested in it. They made us wait a little bit for it too, which was really nice. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. If you don't understand, AJ Francis's gimmick is supposed to be more like Suge Knight. Like usually you would see a guy like that and he's the muscle. This is almost backwards because his his, his character is built off being Suge Knight and being the boss and being in charge, being the money guy, you know? So it'll be interesting to see if they ever add additional members to this. But um, I, I, I expect these guys to win the tag team titles at um, who's the fucking who's the champions right now? Oh, it was a, oh no, 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 no. The system are the champions. Ne never mind. System should have those titles for a while, but I expect these guys at some point to be the champions. We wanted Rich Swan and Willie Mack to win at one point, and that never happened. I think it'll happen here. But this is a great, 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 great gimmick. Loving it. AJ Francis has nailed everything, and it's bleeding over to Rich Swan. Tom Hannafin over music conducted a sit down interview with Laredo. Kid Laredo Kid first graced our television screens in like 2016. Global Force Wrestling. I've never heard this dude speak. English is a little broken, but he, he's a he's a decent enough speaker. It wasn't, you know, it, it was genuine. But you're putting him over fucking music, and you're and it's not good music, and you're you're taking away the the feeling of the interview. I would have much rather heard it without it, but they do not think that is a good idea. They think that you have to put music. That is how they do television. That is how they do interviews. Um, I think that's why Tom Hannafin's interviews get 5,000 views on, on YouTube. They uh, ran down the episodes for next week. Um, rebellions in about 18 days as I've been recording this. So I need to make sure I'm off work that night. I got to remember for that. I don't even remember if I got tickets, tickets for the following night or not. Of course, after I purchased tickets, they released uh, free tickets for veterans. But I mean, those tickets are kind of nosebleedish. That's what I use for um, AEW. And I was, I mean, damn near the very top. So that's not usually how I like to enjoy wrestling. So, um, but I wish I did it for the tapings because I don't really care to be. I'm only ringside for the pay per view. I don't really prefer. I don't. It's a waste of money for me to do it for the tapings. Not. I'm not saying it's a waste of money. It just is for me personally. But next week we're getting Moose versus. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the uh, Rebellion. So so far we got Moose versus Nick Nemeth, Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards versus Speedball Mountain, Sullivan and Bailey, and a kick out. Um, Mustafa Ali versus Jake something. Um, and then obviously Steph double D lander for the uh, knockouts championship versus Jordan gray. So I, I have a feeling they're going to throw the rest of this car together. Pretty. Um, I don't know what, what I'm looking for pretty recklessly. <laughs> I think they're just going to throw shit together, but next week we're getting Mustafa Ali versus Rhino in an old school rules match. We're getting old school rules, and then the following match, we're getting the following week, we're getting Monsters Ball. So they're just, they're, they're just, we're in, it's ECW, so we have to do garbage matches. Frankie Gazarian versus Chris Bay, that's going to be excellent. Ashby Elegance versus Zaya Brookside, I'm looking forward to that as well. Nick Nemeth versus Alex Shelley, that should be excellent. Next, next week's show, if you, if you take Rhino and the old school, like keep Ali, but if you take out Rhino and the old school rules part, you got a pretty nice episode. And as I said, I have a feeling Hammerstone will take on Hot Sauce Williams. I could be completely wrong in, in that assumption, but it wouldn't shock me because it just makes storyline sense for then Josh to attack him afterwards. Main event, we got Steve Macklin versus Chris Saban. And and no ish, they built this by bumping each other, bumping, excuse me, bumping into each other in the parking lot. The 2022-2023 impact booking has now made it made its way to 2024. You bump into each other, and somehow that justifies you making a match. 
But they were in the parking lot. They bumped into each other. I don't know why Chris Saban was walking directly at him. They had that entire parking lot to work with, but um, they needed to bump into each other. So that's what they did. And we got this match. <sighs> the match was good. I'm just not going to lie. I didn't care because just like I might not care when Alex Shelley takes on Nick Nemeth next week, because these guys are gone. They're leaving. They're in the middle of a storyline that was looking interesting. And now they're gone. I should have turned down the brightness of my screen because my face is white. I look like Gia Miller uh, with lights up in my face and shadows and all that shit. Um, so I didn't care. Thank God Steve Macklin won. Um, I don't know what's next for him. We're hoping he sticks around, but I don't know what's next. I don't know if he gets some new partners. Your guess is good as mine. What's next for Steve Macklin? I don't have a clue, but it was, it was difficult for me to care about this because now I'm just like, okay, I know the machine guns are leaving at this point. I'm kind of like, just get them off screen. Let's stop pretending this cares. They're going to do the generational clash. I'll probably care a little bit more about it because I just have a feeling the match is going to be so good. It's probably going to be longer than I want it to be, but I've, I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty damn good. So I'll probably care a little bit more um, than I did for this. So it's, it's going to be weird because they're still playing out this storyline on screen too. <laughs> so I don't know this fucking company. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, I did this about eight minutes shorter than I typically do. And uh, we'll see what happens next week. The next week's episode, again, take Rhino and the old school old school rules out of it. Pretty decent looking episode. So I'm looking forward to it. Probably going to look like shit again like this one did. Hopefully they fix some of the mic work. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hammer on this for a little while. When the NWA episodes come out and we put the two side by side. If it's true that BQ has been right this whole time and that it's an effort thing, it's a personnel thing, it's a it's a knowing what the F you're doing type of thing, then that's when we attack. So that's going to do it for me, folks. I'm your boy, BQ, and I'm out. Peace.